Coming up on today's Sun and Fun edition of Airborne Unlimited. News from GAMI, Holy Micro, Plane Tags, Seaplane Pilots Association, and Rotax. Plus, some parting words from SNF boss Gene Conrad. And I'm your host, Holland Lee. Welcome back to Sun and Fun. Today's our last day presenting Airborne, but the fun's not over yet. Join us tomorrow at noon Eastern for Saturday Flight Live, so you can virtually enjoy the afternoon air show. Today's show is presented by Waco Aircraft and Junkers Aircraft and their exciting new A-50 Heritage. Big news from GAMI, G-100 UL is now in production. After a decade and a half of struggling with the FAA and other aeropolitics, G-100 UL is in production and there are a million gallons currently available. We go into a show like this and wondering what the big stories of the week are going to be and obviously you guys are definitely fighting for the top at this point. Uh, tell me what it took to get here and what you think this phenomenal development means to the industry. Well, the industry is being threatened almost to its core by the uh, rapidly accelerating environmental activity in some of the states. And of course there's the EPA, which is not going to be continue to be patient for another 10 years. As Michael Kraft said in, at Oshkosh in 2010, the industry has been studying this problem, trying to find a solution for 20 years. We've got to quit loving the problem and just fix it. Well, we fixed it. And it's a, it's a beautifully workable fuel in some ways. It's better than 100 low lead. And real benefits maintenance-wise. Spark plug maintenance is maybe a thing of the past. There's about a an easy average 40% reduction in all of the major wire metals between the right engine and the left engine and the AOPA bearing. And you know, that's not our data, that's data that an independent organization, namely AOPA, collected. There's been continuous opposition within a number of areas uh, in the airplane fuel regulatory world, and it's taken an enormous amount of effort and patience and unnecessary expense. Tim, so as I understand it, you got a million gallons on tank right now. We do. We're really pleased for that. It came together very well. Uh, VTOL Aviation out of Houston is committed to uh, be the primary provider of this fuel for the near term. VTOL has a million two sitting in a tank in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, next to the river. So it's a great place to start from. You can put it on a river barge from Baton Rouge and take it anywhere in the Mississippi River system all the way to Pittsburgh. Uh, it's right next to a, an east-west intercontinental railroad line that goes from the east coast to the west coast. So it's got rail, truck, marine. You know, there's that wonderful old movie, The Field of Dreams. Build it and they will come. Well, Gammy and VTOL have built it. And the question is, does anybody want to play baseball? And after the break, staying safe with Holy Micro. Why take the risk of guessing the height on takeoff and landing when Sky Voice Alert 500 gives you audible callouts from 1 foot to 500 feet up and down? Sky Voice Alert 500 is the only FAA approved takeoff and landing height announcer, and it also gives you reminders and warnings on gear, flaps, and more. Quick and easy install, Bluetooth or wire. Get yours today at holymicro.com and receive a $300 discount at Sun and Fun, booth D54.
welcome back. Holy Micro introduces Virtual Pilot Assistant. You can never have too many good aids in keeping a flight safe. Holy Micro has an interesting approach to keeping pilots informed. What is it that brought you to design this piece of gear and tell me exactly what it brings to the general aviation market? All right. So it's about 14 years ago I was a student pilot and I was struggling to flare the plane to have a proper height and proper landing and it took me quite some time and it took four instructors. I just couldn't judge the right height for flaring. Either I would be too high, 20, 30 foot high, and I think it's close enough, or I wouldn't flare at all, and I'm almost coming to hit the ground. So it scared everybody, and I just didn't have that right depth perception. And finally, I figured out that I have to have something. There might be a lot of people struggling with the same struggle that I have. So since then, I've been on a pursuit, and I finally got a breakthrough with the right type of lidar that gives me very accurate measurement when we are coming to land and also when we are trying to take off. So that's how it started. And then as I expanded into learned more about what are the other requirements, I learned that people want reminders, especially people with uh, retractable gear. They really like to have a reminder, check gear at 500 feet or right around that time. So they still have one minute left to put your gear down, their gear down and land safely. So In other words, they want a virtual instructor right next to them. Right, exactly. Virtual instructor, yeah. Smart. Own a piece of aviation history with plane tags. The folks at Plane Tags have collected memorabilia from over 200 aircraft of all makes and categories and offer mementos of great planes and aviation's proud history. Plane tags are genuine pieces of skin, and what we've done is uh, we've documented over 200 aircraft so far from SR 71s, B 17s, P 51s, and of course commercial airlines. And what we do is we take the fuselage skins and we stamp them, laser etch the schematic and the tail number on it, and on the back side of the card, it'll tell you the history about the aircraft and where we found it. You know, a lot of people, uh, they all have their favorites. We have general aviation tags, we got helicopter tags, we have World War II and, and Korean War tags. Uh, when we work with a World War II aircraft, typically we're working with people restoring the planes. So what they'll do is the first thing they do is remove the old skins and they'll use them as patterns to put new skins on. So like when you see a P-51 or uh, the XP-82, th these are aircraft that are uh, still flying and being restored. We have um, a backlog, about three years of, of aircraft that we're waiting to release. We release new tags every two weeks. What's great is we license with a lot of commercial airlines now, United, American, uh, Alaska, Air Canada, and what we do is we basically raise money for the family funds, and so far to date we raised over a quarter million dollars for family funds for the commercial airlines, and they love it. Any un unique stories on how you've tracked down certain aircraft? You know what's great, it, it kind of starts to find us a little bit, we get great leads. We were just in North Carolina uh, tearing down a Northwest DC-10, which was a, a real hard one to find. You know, we just did a, pro a project with the Mid-Atlantic Museum on the S-60 flying crane. I actually got an email from Igor Sikorsky's grandson, who was Igor Sikorsky, thanking us for documenting the aircraft. Uh, and now they're selling in the Smithsonian, Pima Air and Space, Museum of Flight. Uh, they're all advocates of it because it's educational. Where can people get more information? Plaintags.com. Uh, there's a full encyclopedia there of all the aircraft that we've documented. Uh, as I may have mentioned, 200 aircraft to date that we've done so far, mm -hmm. and we're just getting started. The Seaplane Pilots Association is on the move. The Airborne team got an update on the latest and greatest in one of the aviation world's coolest aviation pursuits. Bring me up to date on what's happening with the Seaplane Pilots Association. Well, it's an exciting time for the Seaplane Pilots Association and a challenging time all in one. Uh, we're doing more advocacy in the form of safety programs. I'm doing about 50 safety seminars a year from Alaska to Australia. Uh, we have a online training program for amphibious float gear operations, which all the pilots get wings credit for. So we're a FAA partner, a training partner on that. We're expanding that program. Uh, we are doing in-water PFD deploys on pilots. One of the basic tenements to safety is that you should never use your safety gear for the first time when you need it. So we're actually putting pilots in the water and doing in-water deploys 
on the PFDs for them. Smart. Getting them to swim with it, deflate it, reinflate it, getting used to maneuvering with it. So really exciting times from a safety side. Uh, we're getting more involved with our scholarship programs. We're actually providing zero cost seaplane ratings for pilots. And uh, a lot on the invasive species side. One of our greatest challenges to water access in the United States is invasive species regulation. So, Ouch. Yeah. So we're trying to get our user group to be a self-policing user group where we provide literally a pre-flight checklist that allows them to do a inspection and decontamination for aquatic invasive species. And we're working right now with Embry-Riddle. Mm -hmm. on a program also to do some, how do we achieve a kill? You know, how do, for an amphibious seaplane, how can we incorporate new technologies that won't spread the invasive species? How can people get more information on the Seaplane Pilots Association? Very easy, seaplanes.org, uh, seaplanesplural.org. Uh, go to the website, request information. You can always reach out to us. Uh, we have the flight training directory, which we publish uh, both online and in a printed version that will list all the flight schools, what they fly, what their program looks like, and how much it costs. Excellent. Have a great show. Take care. Recapping the Rotax 916's first year. ANN had the honor of helping to introduce the Rotax 915 at last year's Innovation Preview, and we got a chance to review what a year in the field is teaching the aviation biz. Dean, uh, last year ANN was proud to be the uh, launch point during the Innovation Preview for the yeah, 916. Over there, yeah. yeah, we had a great time and it was a lot of neat stuff, and even more neat stuff this year. Tell us what you're learning from the first year of the 916 in the aviation community. The, the big thing with the 916 is it's it's a beautiful engine to be a replacement for like a like Homing 320 or 360. The problem is it's 200 pounds lighter. So a lot of the places where you'd want... Oh, such problems. Well, yeah. So, you, you, well, you saw the RV-9 that Lockwood brought to uh, Oshkosh last year. It was like three iterations to get the installation to where the airplane still handled the way it's supposed to, yeah. you know, with, with that got a bit of a liquid. snoot on it now. It does. It yeah. does. Well, it's got less than one of the iterations before yeah. it. But, but yeah, it's, it's what you've got to do to make that work. So that's the interesting thing about the 916. So most of them are going into things like gyros at this point because people just want all that horsepower. Oh, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. The big thing we're learning is very much like like the 915. It, it, it's running well. We're really happy with it. Uh, the biggest thing that we're having to do is help people figure out how you do an installation with it. So it's like people are asking, okay, what about when Mosaic comes out? Is that going to have an impact with the 916? Yes, I believe it will. It'll have a big impact. I anticipate about a three to four year you know, delay on that just because people are going to have to start designing airplanes around the engine and the first ones that do are going to be doing really well with, with the engine. But yeah, it's beautiful. We, we love it. Well, we've talked to a number of manufacturers that are already you know, uh, working on their next design and everybody's building around the 916 and what they, what they hope will be next after that. Right, right. And, and yeah, that, that Rotax has made no secret out of that. They want to keep walking up the horsepower, but now that they're getting a lot more experience with these engines and with the vendors and getting reliable parts, and stuff like that uh, for the engines. They're going to do a lot better this time around when they go to those kind of horsepower engines. Dean, thanks so much for your time, and we look forward to seeing what you guys are up to in the future. Sounds good. Thank you. Take care, guys. Thank you. And after these messages, some parting words from SNF boss Gene Conrad. The M700 Fury, an aircraft worthy of the name an indomitable force. With performance surpassing its predecessor, the M700 Fury has 20% shorter takeoff and landing distances, a 30% improved climb rate of over 2,000 feet per minute, and reaches a maximum cruise speed of over 300 knots. Experience the Fury. Join the legacy.
backcountry flying to us is our playground. For us, it's how we access the things we like to do. It's just our lifestyle. We exclusively use the, the Hartzell Voyager prop, and it's proved to be um, just a great combination for what we do. What it's doing, it's, it's helping us all have better performing airplanes. Man, it feels a lot better clearing trees by 50 feet versus 20 feet. I don't ever see myself not flying. Welcome back. Some parting words from SNF boss Gene Conrad. On today's Morning Brief Show, Gene Conrad recapped the first few days of the 50th Sun and Fun Aerospace Expo and told us about what may be in the offing for the future. We had to talk to the boss of bosses, Gene Conrad, and find out, one, how's it going so far, boss, and two, where do we go from here? You know, just to kick off the week, you know, we had a great day Tuesday. We had over 300 more airplanes here on Tuesday this year than we did this time last year. Wow. So we're pretty excited about that. Um, we had our opening night concert with Dylan Scott and Sarah Evans. We've had about six or 7,000 people out on the ramp Tuesday night, so that was a good time. And then Wednesday, you know, another great day. And then we uh, finished it up with the, uh, the Wednesday night air show and then the fireworks. If you were not here on Wednesday, I encourage you to be here Saturday. It was world-class stuff. Lots of positive feedback this week and, you know, lots of people in record numbers for us. You know, but it's been a phenomenal week. We'd like to emphasize more, and I know you would as well, is that there's more to Sun and Fun than a really great week out of the year. You know, our net proceeds from this event go back into our year-round educational programming. And, you know, we're, we're inspiring and, you know, our mission is to engage, educate, and accelerate the next generation of aerospace professionals. And we're, we're doing that bigger and better than anybody in the world. You know, Paul Poberezny said, always said, the planes bring us together, but it's the people that keep us coming back. And, you know, we're, we're all here to come. You know, we have, we have a record number of exhibitors here this year, by the way, 563, a record for us. You know, but people are coming here to conduct business and have a good time. But at the end of the day, when, when the sun goes down, it's about our, our, fen, our friends and our family and being around like-minded aviation people. We are absolutely nothing without our volunteers. Over the last 50 years, we have 20,000 people recorded that have volunteered here for this organization. We're very, very fortunate um, you know, to have our volunteers and, and for their love and passion and dedication for Sun and Fun and what we do. And you know, they're believers. I will tell you, for the 49th Sun and Fun Aerospace Expo last year, we made a lot of changes in preparation for the 50th, and here we are. And the changes have worked. Lots of, again, lots of great feedback. You know, but what does it look like moving forward? Well, this year is the catalyst for where we're going. We're doing a master site plan for our year-round campus and also for the fly-in because there is significant growth happening here at the airport. But we're getting ready to plan for our next 50 years and for the fly-in and all of our year-round educational programming. So it's an exciting time. Lots of work, you know, underway. Um, you know, but we're already looking forward to our 51st. Thanks for joining us this week at Sun and Fun. See you back here next week for regular airborne programming.